by the grace of Christ. Let us go to the Gospel according to John chapter 21 and verse 1. Chapter 21, the Gospel of John, verse 1. And verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples of the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. <laughs> Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, the sign of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered to him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? No, that was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise, is likewise the fish. And this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, the son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you were old, you would stretch out your hands and another would gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signified by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. <clears throat> then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, whom al who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. And Jesus did not say to him that he would not die.
but if I will that you remain till I come, what is that to you? This disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know, and his testimony is true. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which they did, were written one by one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Once the Lord arose and the brother did not believe, he revealed himself first to Simon, son of Jonah, who denied him in a horrible way, three, to three times, and even cursed and taken an oath against him, against knowing the Lord, and later in order to return the two who were leaving from Jerusalem Cleopas and by likely and likely Luke and he returned those two uh, also Peter or the uh, Simon who was later called Peter as he revealed to them that he was risen and through his resurrection the Father God regenerated them to a living hope so for the first time he's coming before all the disciples the first Sunday not in the presence of Thomas and then he revealed to them his resurrection that only then only getting regenerated and are changing no one could have convinced Thomas. No one can convince any person about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he's telling us in the prophetic word, they're mine. I call them in order to be glorified. Man can do nothing. How much more to save his his companions? Even though the Lord is giving them a commandment and to go to Galilee, and there I will speak to you. He's speaking for one more week. He's waiting for Thomas. He tried to find Simon, and now he's waiting for Thomas. None of them is 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 to be spared by the Lord. He needs all of them. He's going to save all of us. He's going to wait for one more week. Thomas came too. And he visited them a second time just for Thomas. Thomas, come here. Didn't you say that unless you put your hands on the mark of the nails, and on the mark of the spear. Here, put your hands and touch me. See. And Thomas exclaimed, one well, we need to exclaim as well, my Lord and my God. Is he? Is he for you? Is he your Lord and your God? This is a miracle. This is a miracle. This is a miracle of the... Uh, trying you and God God the Father revealed the Lord Jesus Christ revealed to you that he's all your Lord and your God that he's resurrected and the Holy Spirit regenerated you to a living hope when we all are the result of the spiritual process of the trying you and God everyone his word the love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit the peace of Lord Jesus Christ rules in our hearts as the Lord Jesus Christ said I'm giving you out of your my peace as he reveals to us the future thing that fills us with joy this is the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is not drinking and eating, but the, 
the joy of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father. And now, now the Lord went to Galilee according to his word. And the disciples went to Galilee according to his commandment, and they're waiting for him to be revealed. And as they're waiting, Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, not Peter yet, said, let's go fishing like he used to. How easy it is for a blessed believer. He cannot wait a little bit more. And merely after six disciples said, and we're going to come with you. And they went out. Immediately they went to the boat to go and fish. And the Lord is waiting for them. Once he prepared everything, what is he preparing? All night they didn't catch a single fish. That without the Lord Jesus Christ he cannot do anything. As they are seen from a distance, a man that don't recognize maybe because their eyes were withheld from recognizing. And the Lord said, Hey, children, do you have any anything to, uh, to eat? And they told them, we have not even a single, we don't have anything. And then he said to them, cast under the right side of the bow, and you will find some. He had ordered all the fish to stay away from them, and then he had ordered the fish to go to the right side of the boat on his commandment. What kind of God is this? And then when they cast the net, they were not able to draw it in, in because of the multitude of fish. And when they saw this, and then the disciple of love, and today we want to be, all of us today, disciples of love. John has one characteristic that he's intensely loved by the Lord because he loves the Lord very much. He recognizes the Lord and says, it is the Lord. And then Simon Peter reveals his character. He put on his outer garment. He plunged the sea, first of all, from the rest of the disciples. And then he saw a fire of coals on the beach and fish laid on it and bread. Then the rest were coming to with a boat. They dragged the net to the land. And nobody asked him who it was, but they knew that it was the Lord Jesus. How beautiful it is that in your life, next to you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't see him. Maybe you don't recognize him. But next to you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Next to you is always the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they saw, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. And then Simon Peter, he went first. He's going to obey. First of all, he's going to drag the net full of fish. He's going to count there to 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. I heard the voice of the Lord, come and eat breakfast. <clears throat> Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? And knowing that it was the Lord, they sat with him. He took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish, and all are eating together. The Lord said unto them, This is the third time. This is the third time. 
that Jesus revealed himself to the disciples. From now on, he's starting a special work that are that relates the future. Up to this point, the work of Christ was relating to the past. The past of Simon denied the Lord. The past of Thomas, who was not present with the rest of the disciples, who knows why? Maybe he was disappointed. He had he lost his hope? Was he afraid? Nobody knows. The past of the disciples who didn't believe in no matter in the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The past of failure but also the the past of blessing as when it was aligned with the obedience to the will of God and the rest that follows after that and now starts the work of the future especially for the eleven especially of the Simon Peter as for you who are here today the church once they finished eating, Jesus said to the one who was first to meet the Lord that day, he said to him, the word of God calls him Simon Peter, but Jesus calls him just Simon, son of Jonah. He has not been transformed yet to Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? More than all these people the f and all these activities and material things. Fish. And he yeah, replied to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Since you love me, feed my lambs. A precondition in order to feed the little lambs that are children of God. I used to love Christ. And the result of loving Christ and you don't despise the little sheep, but you go and feed them. Whether that's called Sunday school, whether it's called Sunday school for little children, uh, primary school, high school, junior high. Christ entrusts this work to you. If you love Christ, then you're going to feed those lambs well. <coughs> But I didn't finish there of Simon, son of Jonah. He said the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And our brother is saying, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then become the sh the pastor and the shepherd of my larger sheep. Now those are older, bigger sheep, They're not little lambs. And you can do this only because you love me and you continue to love me. A <coughs> precondition to pastor your family, your wife and your children your brethren in the church and to be a, a man who builds up and doesn't offend is to love Christ and the third time he said something special he said to him Simon son of Jonah do you love me I do you love me? This is the Greek text, the original text. Uh, you love me with a friendly connotation. <coughs> Do you love me with a friendly love? 
you know everything Lord you know you know how serious this is um, do not call you servants anymore says the Lord there are his servants do not call you servants do not call you sir my servant anymore I'm calling you Simon son of Jonah my friend are you if you're doing what I'm asking you this is a personal relationship in order to be able to to feed and pastor this is a personal relationship of love this is horrible brother uh, I've said this I need to tell you again because I've marked my life I had my grandchild it was just been baptized the Holy Spirit in Calamo in the area of Calamo he was seven or eight years old I said constantly you know, let us pray before you sleep and ask the Lord to and I and I told him to ask anything he wanted from the Lord and because he was going to grant that to him and I said and then I and then he asked me why should I ask grandfather and then he said well then I thought why should I tell him to ask from the Lord I said Lord Jesus please tell me why should I tell him to ask from you he is baptized the Holy Spirit and born the church raised the church why should I tell him to ask from you and the Lord came in front of me and told me tell him to ask me to make him my servant and to ask me to become my friend in order to speak mouth to mouth and I was at a loss terrified and I said that to him he still remembers that and what matters is that even though he's never forgotten that, that, since that point I have not forgotten that point somebody would say to me um, somebody when I was a kid and somebody would say to him do you want to become friends I would if I would say yes then we'll become friends if not we're not be friends and Jesus is asking us today do you want to become friends servant of Christ he's gonna make you or made servant but friends you want you're gonna have to become his friend and you need to ask him I remember the first time when I saw this from the Lord all my room was filled with a terrifying presence and I said and I said one a word and I cannot say it since then and I call him the way he wants to whenever I say this I want to say this to When I say this to people, my friend Manoli, as if I say this to any people, may he may he make you his friend. Simon, son of Jonah, are you friend? Do you love me with this, with this personal, particular love? Simon said, "You know everything." And then pastor and my sheep since you love me you're my friend learn when you were younger you can do it it will be absolutely free by the time will come and they're gonna bind you they're gonna take you where you don't want to go and in this way he showed how with his death Peter is going to glorify the Lord 
Peter, he knows now everything because he's a friend of Christ. He knows that he has a life ahead of him to teach, to shepherd and pastor a lambs, sheep, and to feed also the sheep of the Lord. When the time will come from that moment when the Lord is going to call him and he's going to glorify him by giving him the chance not only to believe for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ but to suffer for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he said to him what he's saying to us today now follow me says Christ now that's what Christ wants from us follow me now and he left and he just left and Peter is following where wherever he's taken you that's your blessing wherever you're going that's going to be your curse there is a path of blessing and the path of curse the path of blessing is following Christ the path of cursing is for Christ to follow you what's admirable the son of love he follows <coughs> how we understand everything let us see this in the beginning which of you what I'm telling you which of you is gonna listen with attention when I'm telling you who is listening John heard with attention without the Lord telling him come to follow me but John is following the Lord on his own initiative Peter is going ahead of him is that we're gonna pay attention Christ going ahead of all of us I am the Lord who brought you today I'm telling you follow me and you will see my glory my eternal glory next to the throne of my father says the Lord turn around and saw him was following the Lord John what's going to happen to him He's going to die too. He's going to kill him. He's going to go where he doesn't want to go. What is going to happen to him? And the Lord doesn't like it at all when we ask about other people. What the Lord wants to ask him, what's going to happen with me? What are you going to do with me, Lord? What am I going to do with you, Lord? And the Lord said, what, what do you care if what do you care what's going to happen to him what is your interest level if I will that he will remain what you, do you care yeah, our eyes as the Lord Jesus Christ said to the Lord Jesus Christ he is the one who is granting us a perfect heart to hope in Him. He is the one who is managing our lives. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. He is the Lord our God. Amen. Yes, Lord. You are the one. You are my Lord and my God. And He continued on His path. Then John continues on his path. John is now following Peter. 
Peter now no longer cares if Christ loves John. What is he going to do with John? Whatever Christ wants to do. What is Christ going to do with Peter? Whatever he wants to. We're just following Christ. Amen. Then later, the continuance of Peter is not uh, the best thing for Peter. There are difficult difficulties in his life. But he's going to be an apostle now, Apostle Peter. He's a teacher, Peter. He is an evangelist. From all these things, he's a special vessel. Who's going to go to Cornelius? Peter. Who's going to go to prison? In order for the glory of God to be reve revealed, Peter. Who's going who's to go to Rome? Peter. What about the rest of them? God knows. What is John going to do? Christ knows. What is God going to do with Paul? God knows. Peter knows what Christ is going to do with him. And when he became aged, the tradition says they hang him. And he said, I'm not worth it. How much he loved Christ. He doesn't care about death. He, he loves Christ. He's a friend of Christ. How much did he love him? Crucify me upside down. I don't want to have the honor to be crucified like my Lord. And now he is with, with Christ, with him that he loves. You know what's honorable? Are you going to be God willing if you become with Peter when he comes to? The resurrect first the dead in Christ at the same time to receive those who are living and all of us together to find ourselves to meet our, our Lord in there. Thus, dear brethren, do you love Christ? Do you want to become a friend of Christ? This is where Christ wants to help us, Christ. Amen.